going to build one of these Harbor Freight made by One Stop Gardens. Uh, 12 long, 10 wide, 10 foot for three high greenhouses. Um, we just completed one and I thought I would do a quick kind of the things that I figured out as I went along. It comes with a real nice set of instructions um, and as you open up the big box everything is kind of separated out kind of um, this pretty much this base is in its own box um, and it's going to yeah it's the base assembly instructions and it'll tell you to dig 10 foot 2 by 12 foot 2 by 5 inch deep um, hole um, to set this down into um, so and it has to be level and that this is the key to getting this done in my opinion as easily as possible this needs to be square and level and so this is dug down five inches on this side and the ground wasn't level so we wound up coming over um, and I, I so I, I dug deeper than five inches and I buried a 4x4, four four, pressure treated 4x4 four four that I had um, to take up the difference. Up there is setting on the soil and then as we come along as it gets deeper I just started digging this 8 foot piece in and it fit nicely to, to bring this up to level. Um, I've got to add more soil here on the outside to get because this is relying on skin effect to hold it in place. It's relying on the weight of the rock inside and the soil pressed up against it on the outside to hold it in the ground. Um, and on this side you can see, you know, I'm up here against a piece of lumber right there that I put on here to, to allow me to um, get get this level. So to, to level this, once you dig your hole, well first things I suggest you do is take this and lay it on the ground, bolt it together um, at these places. It's really easy to figure out. These are a special bolt that have a rounded head with a hex allen on it, I guess, and in a nut. And you put the head from the outside in, and these set down underneath that lip. And um, it says finger tight. Um, I took a nut driver and, and tightened them snug, like, you know, tight as you could go with your fingers, and then gave it like a quarter of a turn just to make it solid, and then push the corners together as much as you can, and then measure across, because it's not going to be 10 foot, and it's not going to be 12 foot. It's going to be like, you know, inch and three quarters short and two inches short this direction. So that'll just save you some hole digging as you're doing that. So do that. And then what I did was I marked out where I wanted it um, with four of these electric fence posts. You can pick these up. I think these probably came from Menards or Lowe's. Um, you can get them at farm stores. Um, they're, they come, some of them are smooth. These are like a rebar. But So I put these in all four, four corners a couple of inches out from the, the 10 foot by 12. And keep in mind this is not 10 foot by 12. It's a little short. And then I took string. Well, and a, a compass, and I kind of lined up this north and south on on the sides from here to there. That's south to north, and then measured over and worked everything out until it was as square as I could get. I had a compass 
and I balled it with that. Then push these in the ground about so deep, just so they would be relatively easy to get out later, and put a string across it from all four corners. And I, I started over here on this side, knowing that I would go clear down five inches, and I came up fr from the ground at the highest point, which just happened to be right there, and I tied the string at six inches. And then I would put, I have four of these little levels. They're string levels, they just hook on the string right here on the top. These are really cheap. I don't know, I've had these for a while, but you can get them at hardware stores. Um, they're just a little string level. I have four of those, they come in a set. So I started with six inches here, and then I came over to the other post in this corner, and when this was level, I tied it on to, this, to the post. And then I actually took a piece of tape, put around it so it would hold it, so it wouldn't slip. And then I went from here over to this corner with the post, put the string on it with my, uh, you know, another one of these four. And here's the tape I used. But, um, and did that all the way around. And when the string was level, I tied, I, you know, I wrapped it around the post, put some tape on it over and then came back to here and this was level 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 the string was and then I knew how how much I had to go down and I think over here was like 12 inches so no I think it was like 13 inches I can't remember but it wasn't six inches and so then I was able to just start digging and so I dug over here to get this down I took my tape measure and just measured you know, down, knowing that six, you know, this was going to be one inch, or just sticking up just a little bit above the soil outside, and then I was able to level it that way. Um, and I didn't, I like I said, I assembled this at first, but then I was doing this part by myself. In the directions, it tells you to, once you get it all leveled here, then you set it in with some help. Um, and I knew I didn't have it level at all because there was just, it, I dug what I felt would need to be done. Then I took this piece in by itself and got it level. And then I brought this piece in and then I would measure down from the string from that was tied onto the post to the top of here until I, it was the same, you know, if it was say six inches here until it said six inches here. Uh, or I think it said five. So if it was five inches here, five inches here, and that's when I wound up having to put in some lumber underneath to bring it up to, to the height. But by measuring and using your string and tape measure, you can get this level and then add the next piece, get it level, level. And now you've got three pieces level and then you level this one and this one and this line up because it's level and, and then you can measure corner to corner and corner to corner and then make sure that the numbers match and wiggle it back and forth until it does after this is all level you're going to put gravel in here the entire inside the goal of the design is for the, they call it skin effect, which is the, uh, the the friction between the rocks and the dirt on the outside, holding this into the ground from lifting off the ground. It says it's going to take about 40 cubic feet of gravel or other appropriate fill material. This is what we did. We went to the quarry um, and we purchased. 3,120 pounds is what it wound up weighing. Um, just had them loaded onto that trailer. Has a tailgate that folds up to keep it from falling out the back. And brought it in here, shoveled it in, filled this in. Um, and when this was dug out, I did not, I brought the top, the center down 
but I didn't bring it down the full five inches from here because this was raised over here. So I brought it down to where it would be level with the bottom of this outside frame. And so then that's where, then we actually laid down a weed barrier um, on the ground before we put the rock in. And then, like I said, it was, it was just what the trailer would hold is what we bought. Uh, it was like $48 um, and Corey's only about seven miles from here. And then um, we carried in shovel by shovel from the trailer this is just a short walk from the gate and filled this up and um, that was enough for a day so the next step is these um, they call it phase two floor plate installation and this is the aluminum floor that goes or uh, base or plate that goes around that attaches to this frame and it attaches, everything else attaches to it. And when you, you just follow the directions on looking for the parts. Most of the parts are, uh, this was all rubber band together with a couple rubber bands, but the short one, these two I think were not. Um, I looked for an A1 through all the parts, couldn't find it, looked for a, a 2A, couldn't find it, or a 1A. But they were just, I did find a one and a two, and they just didn't have an A on it, and those was the correct parts. Um, so you, you gather this, all this will be in one bundle, or what mine was, wrapped up with a couple rubber bands, and these were in some other random bundles of start parts. And then they call a normal bolt. They have, a, the bags come, and it's labeled 65. And it tells you, and it's a normal bolt. And this is just extra stuff that came with it. They send you all the bolts plus a bag of miscellaneous spare parts. The normal bolts are the short ones, and then the nut. And also be aware. So this, the bolts that that back here that hold this together that have that the hex head on them, they are a different thread so they're gonna look like this and I was missing one nut in that package but I was able to find one in the miscellaneous parts bin or that came as spares and it's labeled spare parts um, all the nuts there's a lot of nuts in there and I had to keep looking until I found one that matched but I, it did it did have it so that's a big plus and these when it talks about hold downs, uh, you just follow the directions and you'll see right here in the center and right there, right there, you know, they, they call for this little piece right here and they sent two extras. And the directions do say that there's two extras. And these, you just put them on the bolts. You bring the bolts from the outside in and you bolt this together. It says finger tight, and then you put these on. Um, as you're putting it on, it's gonna wanna wobble around. I, I, I took my finger on this one as I put these on, and you push it up tight against this steel part. So here's the, the aluminum base plate we're putting on now. So I push that up and tighten this down fairly snug every place because otherwise it just kept slipping off and then I did you know as you bring the corner this one it comes up to the corner and so you have one on each side and these two pieces butt together each corner so right here like that they butt together the inside corners the outsides do not but the insides do all the way around the holes line up it's perfect. It actually is like perfect. Um, I'm really surprised. I'm happy with the quality of this. And then the, you know, you just finish on the way around and then it says finger tight because you're going to come back and you will. You'll be back 
loosening and putting more stuff and more stuff and more stuff on as you continue the build. But I just took a nut driver, these for the a 10 millimeter nut driver, because this is a 10 millimeter nut. And I snug things down, you know, until it touched and in the quarter of a turn or a little more on each one to get it to set in there nice and square, wiggled it just a little bit to get the corners to line up, and then, then you are ready for the next step. And if you have concerns on how you're doing it, you can look right here. There's the front, that, number one and number two, they have a little lip, little hook right there. That is where your door tra travels through it. That goes to the outside, and then here, this where it drops down to keep water from running up underneath, I suppose. That goes on the, all the other three sides. And right here is the, the door. This piece here, and yeah, as you can see, there's the short one, and it goes on the bottom. The short one goes underneath the, the top, the long one. And it will tell you those things in the in the uh, directions. Okay, and at this point, before we started putting these walls in, I got to questioning whether we should put some anchors in the corners. And we discussed it and we decided we would. Um, so I took the four electric posts we had, pulled them out of the ground, and then I took them into the corners. I took it straight into the corner, straight up and down, and I drove it in the ground and bent, leaned it out a little bit as I got close to where these would clear, these top corners would clear the um, edge there. Um, when I got it close, I bent the corners of these to allow it to slide underneath of here, underneath of the um, the aluminum. If I had it to do again, I would have done this prior to putting that aluminum on, but I didn't think ahead that far. Um, and then I drove it in the ground until these corners would set the little uh, these ed edges right here could come down against the this bottom lip on this pan here. I drove it in. Um, and of course this is being longer I wound up just taking a sawzall and cutting it off here um, so it would set in there nice nicely um, probably if I didn't have a sawzall I would saw these off before with a hacksaw because um, they're going to stick up you know a good four inches above and they're going to be in the way of your construction um, but I did that in all four corners and that's three foot of rod driven in the ground and once that's in it's you can't grab it and pull it out um, three foot driven in the ground um, well at least I can't I know I can't um, so it's gonna hold um, phase three the corner post installation is confusing when you're just trying to look at these pictures and figure out exactly what's going on. But once once you realize what these corner plates are for, then it makes sense. And what they are, right here, it is the angle for the roof to attach to. And so you just follow the directions and you'll bolt. And I, I followed the I followed the directions on that one, the first one. It tells you to put this in, and then, um, well, I think it tells you to bolt this on. Um, but the way that works best for, worked best for me was I took and bolted this on, and you, you look at the, the, at the number seven posts. They're all number sevens. 
you find those and this is confusing but if you look at it like a top down it's just an X it's a four corner post and you look for these two holes like this and so these two holes are going to be on the sides with the two holes are going to be inside and you can see right here this is that post and there's a hole here and here when oops there's a hole for this bolt this bolt this bolt and then there's an empty bolt right there and the reason that's empty is because when you move over here to this post it turns and then you still have four holes to use so this side here is different than the door side it's going to have this piece this piece and this piece on this corner and over here you don't have the the cross piece so what you do is what I did is it'll tell you which one this one it's got a number on it and yeah this one's 79 this one's 80 so the 80 you can't put on you can you put it on tighten end up finger tighten just a little more but it's gonna come off in a little bit but you're stacking things as you go so put this bolt through they all come from the outside in this one you'll put these two pieces on and we'll look at the drawing in a minute and you'll see and then you bolt this hole up here to hold this triangle or this roof shaped thing on there and then you're gonna put this diagonal on bolt it then you're gonna bring it over and then you're gonna loosen these up down here these little hold downs are underneath here holding it take those off leave then kick the bolts out a bit ways put this down in there it just helps if you have some helper put this bolts back in put these under here hold them up with your finger so that they're hooked underneath that it's got slide tighten those down you get those tight I, and I tighten those pretty good not super tight but you know pretty good finger you know up till it touched and then at least a quarter turn if not a little more maybe almost a half turn tight I want them pretty snug um, and then up here this was this one here just dangles across then and then you find over here it tells you in the book you come out and you just lay it and it'll come up and show you where it goes because itself because it's long enough and it's another one of these hold downs. Loosen that up, put the bolt in. Keep in mind, this doesn't exist yet on here. But then you bolt that tight. You know, and I pushed that up, made it snug. And then came over here and lined this one up the same exact way here. And this piece right here, this one that's underneath, just hangs here in the way for a while. Okay, so right here you can see where I was talking about this one comes across from that's just in the hole it comes down and fastens here this one right here 79 goes through the plate you look here you see the dotted line there is the bolt pointing on the outside that comes through that hole it comes through that bottom hole on the plate comes through this hole on number 31 and then through this hole on 79 and then this 79 comes down here and you see the bolt comes through all of this tin and or this metal and aluminum through the hole down and through the bottom of there and there's your nut and then 31 just kind of hangs there for now and see here's how an exploded view of that and then here's showing how these hook up so you do this one and this one exactly the same come over here and this one is exactly the same as doing these but you do not have this number 31 hanging in the way you, you don't have to do a 31 um, and it's the same way and that sun's gonna be right there and so it's you can see you've got this one and this one but you don't have nothing under here okay phase 4a this is the uh, your ceiling plate assembly front 
and what they're referring to as a ceiling plate assembly front or anything that says assembly plate is going to be or ceiling plate it's going to be here on the top this piece of aluminum here coupled with this piece right here or on the side it's this aluminum channel here that comes along all the way so there's a front and a, a front and a side um, and you can see here it's you just follow the directions you go find 24 and 25 and you put them together and then you take your 26 and 27 and then you slide those inside of it so you're taking 26 and 27 and sliding them inside of here I did not have a 27 but I had two 26's um, so I went back and I looked in the back for 26 and 27 and it says left door rail right door rail four foot ten inches each one of each and they looked identical in the little drawing right there since they did the same thing I figured they would work and they did so I used the 26 and the extra 26 on the other side and slid them together and they just it's you can see they'll just slide through and see that's the head of the nut when it's when it tells you to put the bolts in pay attention to the direction they show to put them when you push them through so on this one you put these two in and these two and you finger tighten them then these back here I think you just finger tighten them these all just pretty much at this point don't over tighten them you need to um, just kind of tighten them enough that they're not going to vibrate off um, at this point and then they are together and then then just I, I just left that set to the side at that point and then you assemble the the uh, ceiling plate for the sides both sides are the same and you just go get a 12 and a 13 and you put it together and then you put the 12 and the 13 in the different orientation just like that and as you can see it has a plate right here and so does the other side they're exactly the same you just put them up there but because it's the opposite side you gotta you gotta do it this way 12 on one end and the other and it shows you to put the bolts how to push the bolts through um, and in if you just think about bolts should all on this is um, I think it's almost everywhere go towards the inside of your project inside of that the house here um, so they all come inside and, and these I tightened down I lined everything up and tightened them down this little tab right here at the bottom that slides in between two pieces of aluminum over here when you first put them up there they don't seem like they're going to slide in together um, or maybe it's this side I can't remember no it's right there it's this one and it won't slide you go look at it but you got to spread that just a little bit with a screwdriver or wiggle it around a bit and it'll it will slide in um, and if your holes don't line up perfectly then look at it step back think about it a minute does is something backwards is something upside down is something not lined does this need to be inside or outside or in between? Um, because there's a few things that you'll come across like that. Um, so then you do that for both sides. So then we, now we're going to do the front ceiling plate, which is 24 and 25 with the the other slid, no, slid over it. Um, and those come to the corners. And this is on the outside. This is your, your trail, your rail right here and so you have this curved part at the top you have the curved up and then this little rail here at the bottom and so then this is going to slide to the corner and it goes we've got tape here over this but 
it slides in here and it attaches to this bolt right there. And you unscrew that bolt, push it out, slide this up, push the bolt in and then tighten it down. Pretty snug, I did. Um, and then the same on the opposite side. And then I think it tells you to tighten a couple of bolts up. It'll point them out. I, I think it's one of these. Maybe it's this one and this one, I think. Snug them down. Um, and so I did that. And then the others, you need to, you need to leave them loose um, when you start to put the door on. If you don't, if, if you tighten them up because you don't want them to f fall off, um, you can come back and loosen them later. But just, I just tightened it down until it touched and just a little snug. And then I had to come back later and loosen them up, plenty loose to get this stuff to line up. All right, so we've now we're doing the the back. So the, remember the 31s that was just hanging down here in the corner. So now we're going to bring them up here to the center. And what they're going to do is they're going to overlap. You know, they're still on the bottom here. They have to be at the bottom. Then they come across here. Keep in mind that none of this down here exists yet. So they're going to come across here. And there's a, you can see this plate right here. You're going to put a bolt through from the outside and you know, two of them in the bottom and tighten them down. Snug, do these snug. Um, and what's gonna happen is that joins them together. And as you can see right here, they're just sticking up in the air. There's, they're not tied to anything, but they're just there to keep things kind of snug. Um, that's the easy part right there. So this part here went pretty well too. Um, it was really nice having help with this because you're standing posts up. Now all of the posts are going to be number 14s uh, on the walls. And there's a 16 and a 17 on the back, but everything else is 14s. Um, so you're gonna get all of them gathered up, and they, they, if you look right here, it tells you, number 14, this one here, the second from the right front, it shows you that there's a 66 times four. What they're talking about is bolt 66. Um, right there, and it's it's one of the longer ones, like that, because this is your regular bolt, and that's your 66 bolt. So you will take this one, four of these 66 bolts, and you are going to drop it down through these slots. So. When you put the post in, the easiest thing we found was taking this nut loose. It still stays hooked on here. It's got your hole down. And then you loosen this, which that nut, that bolt has a flat square head. And it's, you just set this post down over the top of that and it'll line up and hold it. Then you hold this up and tighten that down pretty good. Um, again, and then you'll lean your post out or you can reach up and grab it. And so this one is the first one. We'll look here. The very first post, it says it needs a 66 bolt, a 78 bolt, and a 66 bolt. So you'll go to your bolts. And there's a bags of each one, and I just put them in different containers. But, um, then you just drop the bolts down and you know carry them up here to the top. This keep in mind that this still is this is there, but we're not bolted to anything. So you push it out enough that you can drop these bolts down in there and they fall down or they'll hang up halfway or whatever, but as long as they're in here, and then you pull this back up here and you put your 60 your short normal bolt in at the top and then your nut and tighten it down 
And in essence, what you're doing is you're preparing all of the bolts you're gonna need as you continue working forward for this bolt will already be in there because you can't put it in afterwards. If you forget it, you cannot put it in. You'll have to take it loose and slide it down. If you put them in the wrong order, you're gonna have to take it loose and then rearrange them. So you've added this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. And this one here is really long. Um, as you can see, it's got a spacer behind it, but that's later. But so then you're just gonna prime all of your posts with the bolts as you go. And you're gonna do that for each one, each one of those. So this next one takes 466. This one takes 466. So on and so forth. And then you put, that is the ones in the middle. That's the bolts in the middle. That's not counting the bolt at the bottom or the top. Because this bolt's already there. And then this one you have to add after these middle ones. You do that all the way around. And you come to this one, same thing, it's a 17. And then you do the, um, the 16 over here. And then now this one here, where we have our brackets, for the center ones on the back, your rubber bands that came with all your stuff, these come in handy now, is you're gonna take this, these bolts out that you put in and take this plate off put this rubber band around here two or three times so it'll you know keep your bolts from falling down you don't have to go find them you know after after you've loaded them you've got to put in you know these two here and these two that that tells you to put in bolt it to the bottom at the top then you're gonna I put a rubber band on it to hold it actually I didn't it would have been handy my wife held them um, but if you're doing it this is a good idea I found on the rafters. Put a rubber band around it to hold it. You got a lot of rubber bands. Then you can put your plate, your bolts down, line your plate up, and then you can take your these aluminum bars, put it back on and tighten them down, and your nuts and tighten it down. And then if your rubber band's still there, you if you didn't take it off, once you got your plate through, you can cut the rubber band, but um, I, if you just remember to pull it off once you got your bolts through the plate, and then do that here and here, um, your instinct is gonna be to level it. Go ahead if you want, but it's not gonna, it's not, you're gonna wind up having to change it. Um, and there's tape on here, but this is the top of this post right there. If you level it, you'll wind up with this being at the top of the post. It doesn't matter if you decide to level it now, but later you're gonna be loosening it and moving it up when you add that post, just to keep that in mind. For the front braces, it's pretty much the same. You take post 28 and post 29, and they are just, they're L-shaped. They're different. And you put them in just, you bolt that at the bottom and then you bolt these along here and bolt this at the top. Keep in mind this isn't here yet, but you'll put your bolt in from the outside and bolt it. And you'll look, it's got a, it's bright. If you look, it's got a little shelf that it sits on, a little cutout, and that sits in there and that bolt will line up perfectly. And this is why it's so important that you get your base level and square because then everything else lines up. All of this sets nice and flush. All of these pieces come together in the corners nice with no gaps because everything's square and it makes it really start to get solid at this point. Um, once these are in and this top's on, it, it's starting to be pretty solid. Then you're gonna get your side braces right here. 32, 32, 32. So there's four of the 32s. You go grab them out of your box and you bolt them here. Just um, on each side. And that's just pretty straightforward. You just push the bolts from the outside, tighten them down pretty snug. And if everything is square, those holes are gonna just be 
easy to line up. You may wiggle this around a little bit because it's pretty flimsy, but once you get these lined up and, and tightened in, they're gonna be really snug, real snug, or real sturdy. Um, and that's these right here. And there's our number 30s. And it says 30 goes to the top. It has that on each one of them. And this one being, it'll tell you in the directions that 30, that the top goes to the post. So you'll bring it in and you're going to bolt it here. And then you're going to um, grab the one of the bolts that you've that you preloaded in here and bring it up to this height and you're gonna put it the nut on it just finger tight and then you're gonna come across and do the next one um, with that butt that nut finger tight finger tight because you're gonna wiggle it up and down um, then you'll do your next one one of them goes on top and one goes below the other one one's up on top one's below so the easiest way to figure which way it is because we didn't do it we just started putting them up and then had to redo them or wiggle them around swap them but the easiest way is to measure from here to you know up here pick a spot on both sides and whichever one is the, the longest to be the bottom bottom one and so on this one here you'll dig out a spacer out of your parts and you'll put on this long bolt and then you'll put this here and, and you'll notice that it is over the top of these side braces that you just put these side ones on so when you when you put these in please make sure that you put this underneath because if you push it in then you'll have to take it apart because you're going to have to put this brace right here or this spacer so this will clear and okay the roof the roof we put 22 20 21 and 23 all up here on the front loosen these nuts and drop it down on the back side of the head of the bolt tighten it down for these as you put these in and they're just gonna set up there you know there's just gonna stick up in the air, they're fine. Unless the wind's blowing real hard, but they won't hurt nothing if you tighten them down. Do the same back here with these two. You're gonna drop down into here with put nuts on these and drop them in. Put nuts on, or bolts, I'm sorry. Put bolts here in the track and then work it into these holes, put the nuts on and then that'll stick up um, so then you're gonna have this one already up in the air this one this one just put these two on And this one was already here from earlier because it goes all the way down and now we're ready for to put these pieces on And they're easy It's, it's uh, Number nine and eight and then you see number eight is on the opposite side and nine so you just grab two of those and then bring them over to the corners right here and you put this bolt and this bolt in this rail the top piece is going to sit on top of here on top of your side plate side ceiling thing and then you put the bolt through the only issue i had with any bolts lining up was um, on these bolts was a little tight I had to kind of thread them in to get them in because the hole was just off just slightly so once you have these here um, three bolts in this corner then you can go ahead and put a nut and a bolt there and there on those top ones in those tracks on those these pieces and leave them just finger tight and then do the the other the other three uh, sides and then 
tighten them finger tight because you still have to put that top rail in. When you get ready to put the top rail on, it's nice if you can have two people, one on each side, and um, on a tall ladder. Um, if you don't have two people or you only have one tall ladder, you can stand and you can hold the one end down a little low and you're going to line it up with these two holes here and you can see that you go in between the slot here and then you put your bolt through and you tighten them down finger tight and go do the other side pop it in helps with two people if you don't have two people you can put a piece of wire through one of these two holes and then just kind of let this hang down it can hang down quite a ways then you can do one side and the other and then once those are in you are ready to um, tighten them down and then you can tighten down your these other pieces like that one right there and get them all pretty good and snug when you are done with your all your um, cross pieces and your supports you can take you measure from corner to corner like we did on the, the base and make sure that they're the same distance across um, when this one was done we was about a quarter of an inch uh, off one was a quarter of an inch further I didn't mess with it I knew that the base was off about 3 16 ish the top being off a quarter I didn't know which way it was off before so left it and it worked out just fine everything turned out so um, it didn't have to be I, I don't think it has to be super precise but I think the closer you get the better so we're doing the roof now the rafters and it's just like the the walls it's number 15 so you gather them up and you're gonna have a bolt down here at the bottom of each one that's not counted just like the rafters so you're going to have and it, since these are sloped and you have to climb up on a ladder to do this get your rubber bands that you've got and you'll have quite a few of them and then put around at the bottom when and then drop your bolts down drop your 66 and your 65 down through the slots just like the walls have and then you're when when you're ready to when you got your bolts all slid down through the channel and then you've got your rubber band on it you're going to stand on your ladder and you're going to put a bolt in here and then you're going to slide that down the bolt put a nut and tighten that down fairly snug and then you've got your rubber band here has kept all of these others from sliding off and getting lost on the outside of the wall then you just come up here to this point and then you're going to have to put a nut in a bolt right there and in the slot and then push it through the hole and um, put a nut on it and this would be really nice if you had to help because two people could do this pretty easily a tall ladder really helps in here um, and then you're going to have just like on the side you're going to have these extra bolts just hanging out down here and it's you, if you forget to take the rubber band off you can always just cut it but once you've got you know you can put your hand on it keep them from falling off and work through if you have to to save your rubber band if you don't have enough to move on through all of them um, the next step is putting these pieces in these number 30s and that's just like we did on the walls and they they run all the way along and again if you measure to see which one goes on the bottom and which one goes on the top um, you'll be happier and not not have to figure out you know by measure I mean measure from that bolt hole down to here and let's say that's 25 I don't know and then you go over here and you measure from that bolt hole to here 
and it's 24. Well, this is sh less, so you know it goes on the bottom. And then you just find the bolt hole, the bolt that goes at the bottom, the lowest bolt, first one you come to, coming up, put it through and put nuts on them. Snug them down, finger tight at this point, or a little more. On both of these, kind of square them up so it's they pull together tight in the middle like, like you can see and then crank those things down fairly snug then you're pretty much looking good your cross piece for the bottom of the window you're gonna have to add this little thing it's just a little metal aluminum tab onto this there's four of these number 42's with slots in them you find those and there's already two pre-drilled holes and then you just line them up and um, you put the the tab on the, the flat side um, it's it'll be clear when you look at it but it puts it on the flat side and then you come up here and keep in mind you don't have your windows or your plastic yet but you get your top bolt and you finger tighten it in on there just so it doesn't fall off or you know snug it up a little bit on both of those sides um, just about I don't know three or four inches it's just a guess at this point you do all four of them and then you're ready to uh, install or build your windows so when you build the windows just kind of look at your the way your directions show and think about how water will want to run um, so like 38 is in, in 40 and 39 and 39 so 38 is your top piece it's got the little lip that hooks into the the ridge line to work as a hinge so water will run over the top so that means that 38 is on top of 39 and then so you're going to assemble that like so with the bolts and it shows you 38 being right on top of 39 if, and I put this on backwards and things didn't want to line up when I went to put the plastic in so again if, if you try to put something together and it just doesn't go doesn't seem like it lines up right look at again look at the little details because this is so really well engineered in my opinion so then you just put your bolt from the bottom up and put the nut on it if you don't do it that way you can't put your plastic in and um, so then for the plastic we took some aluminum duct tape not duct but aluminum vent tape for air conditioners or HVAC systems we got the D-U-C-K duck brand and we had some others the duck brand did not work quite as nice as the other because the other backing came off easier so I think it was like a little bit cheaper for the duck brand um, but either way it works just fine and we just taped it and I don't know if you can see you can see yeah, look right here this is a panel just like the window but it's on the door we run this tape along here on the top and fold it over because these are channels these are hollow and the word on the internet is moisture gets in these and then gets moldy or mildew and then also bugs can kind of mosey in there and get up in there and die so we run tape across here and it's tempting as you can see right there we I folded the tape over from the end and that makes it really 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 tight to slide into the doors and the windows so don't do a double on that or you'll struggle with putting that together but you do that with these windows take the top and the bottom just to keep the bugs out and then you just slide this in right there and then number 40 has got slots on it and you line that up and it'll this plastic fits it on the inside of that and it'll slide together if you're building a Harbor Freight 10 by 12 greenhouse, these are the vent windows. Um, thing to kind of watch on these, and I did it wrong for the first time. 
you got to have the sides on top of the the bottom and the same with both sides and at the well the bottom and the top otherwise it won't um, this channel doesn't line up and then these you put on so that the these are pointing up and then here we just stuffed uh, wrapped some aluminum vent tape for air conditioners around top bottom to keep the bugs and condensation out and for installation you hold it level with the ground and it slides in here this channel and then you scoot it across to where you've got your cross pieces and then you adjust accordingly that is that little latch hanging down and uh, the whole build the whole thing that is the least impressive piece of it it's rattly and doesn't work well doesn't hold down I don't know I have to figure something better on that but I just got those clips to keep it from banging about okay when you put the door together you take this rubber piece this rubber there's four of these you should grab one of these and you make sure that the ang this angle the rubber's down and you make sure that the angle goes towards the center and then you are going to screw this piece in this one and this one and they screw in through here and you tighten them down a little bit snug but not really tight yet um, and it it screws in you can't see but it goes into these aluminum holes that are right there these little slots and they, the, the threads bite into that and they hold it together so you do those three um, the middle ones first and it's helpful to have someone help you hold them and line them up if you can you can do it by yourself if you can't but it does help um, and then the top piece the top piece is different it's actually the top and the bottom that you have to assemble um, and you use and it's you just look at the ends of the pieces number 34 has got a hook like that and 35 has this little deal where those screws go into like we was talking about which this is the one with the screws in it right there and then the other one slides over the top like so that screws there it's got a wheel you don't do anything with that but this slides over the top this bolt goes through it and it bolts here and here and you're um, and, and that the top's done and then you snug that down and that's where it needs to stay and then so that one once you get that done then you go ahead and you screw it on here it, uh, on the side and then the base the base on this it has it's a 37 and it's got a, a piece number 51 that you have to assemble and just like all the others the screws come in and then they go through that little channel and, and that hole but this one doesn't have a channel it's got a little block and yeah here it's they sent an extra one and so it goes in there this little block as you can see how it's pointing the direction that this hook is. If you put it in backwards, you'll have to take it out and put it, turn it around. I did that. Um, and then it's got a little hole right here at the end where the screw comes in to it. Um, both of mine, I stripped them out because I tightened them too tight. So keep that in mind. Um, but that just slides in and then see it's right here there's a picture of it and then you put your screws in now this is where it gets if you've put tape on these the top and the bottom it gets difficult to slide in here in through this plastic um, it tells you to slide the plastic in well you can if it doesn't have tape it'll slide in there but if you got the tape it's 
kind of uh, really pretty tight. So you gotta take, I did, it was I took a screwdriver into that groove and I drug it along to force it to, to expand out a little bit. And I sprayed some silicone on my fingers and wiped it on the tape. And then I was able to get it to slide in on these. Um, and once you get them in, then you just come along and you put your other side on. But don't forget this little foot. And this foot slides at the bottom on, on your, your, your rail. And then, so then you do your other one. And then the, the things to pay attention to are the directions of these. And then the directions of this angle should be pointing towards the inside to catch. And then, you know, obviously working these in. And this is what I, I spread apart a little bit. But they fit tight. They won't blow out. And they're not going to get moisture in it. So I think it's worth it. Um, if you don't want to struggle with it, don't put tape on there. Now, put the door on. Um, you just pick the door up. And it's it's helpful to have a help uh, uh, someone helping you out. But you can see that this this piece that you screwed into the bottom right there this little piece here is going to this little notch is going to sit on top of your rail at the bottom of your floor and I'll show you and this slides underneath to put the doors on you can see there is the little plastic bottom piece and it's going to sit on top of this aluminum channel and underneath and make sure that this is up high enough that this aluminum channel, because at first the aluminum was rubbing on here, on mine, when I first put it on. But you start it down here at this end. And get the bottom. Just, it just slide it on. It helps with two people. Once you get the bottom on just a little bit, you come up here. And you get the wheel to run right on up of here. And um, you just slide on like you do a, one of those sliding doors in the trailer house or the hall closet or whatever. And slide it all the way down to the other end. Um, and then put the second door on. I guess you could do it from either side. I did mine from this side because it was low. I gave me more room, and that was before the dirt was brought in. And um, push this in, and then you adjust it. And like I say, I still need to adjust this one. Um, and that's how the door is installed. Then it wants to adjust. To adjust them. You use these screws here. There, you when you put this door together, you leave these pretty loose, and then you can adjust it, wiggle it around to get it to slide and to kind of line up. And once you get it sliding, and he's got pebbles and stuff sticking in there. So that's no, oh, it's ice. Yeah, lovely. Um, anyway. Once you get this in, then you can, and it gets to sliding easily, you can then adjust, um, tighten these bolts up here, and get your screws all tightened on both sides. Um, we did get it lined up really nice working at one point, and, um, and then when we went back and tightened everything else up, it shifted a little bit and it was off, and then adjust it again, and then when it got the plastic in, it was off. Uh, so or now it's time to do it again. Once your doors are hung and slid in there, you're instructed to put a bolt in the end to keep it from sliding off the truck. And On each end. I'm gonna go ahead and put one at the bottom also. <clears throat> I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. 
I would suggest you do that. I'm gonna have to just drill those. And where I had to use, they didn't send the, the correct ones of these, they were the same and not opposites. I had to drill a hole here for this one, which I just, it's easy, it's aluminum. The next step is putting in the plastic, um, bipolycarbonate or whatever it is called. Um, and it basically, you've already got the doors completed, so those are in. You got your windows up here, those are done. And I just started with the 58s. <clears throat> Um, on the, actually this corner over here is where I started um, taping each end over with that aluminum tape just to seal it off to keep condensation and bugs out um, which is my wife did that I'm thankful for that I didn't have to I didn't want to but I think it's well worth it and you basically you just pretty straightforward you set them down from the outside you poke them down in there installing these clips I look at it like this is two legs there's you hook one leg there you push the knee down into the um, between the plastic and the um, aluminum and then you come down there with this other piece and you push it down and you hook this other leg yeah, it's kind of hard with one hand push it in like that and it'll snap in there and at this point sometimes they're setting out like this and it's really handy if you can get you a screwdriver um, pick you up a screwdriver and take a file and cut a little groove in it the groove only needs to be about just a little bit deeper than the the wire and this works really nice because you can stick it in there instead of like I did with my thumb which your thumb gets tired is you can twist this and you can see that it'll allow it to spring down. So, and then also, so here we go, let's do it again. Grab one leg, spread that leg, push the knee down, spread the other leg, push the, and then you just push that other knee right into that deal. So here's the, the rear end. There's the knee and there's the legs, and it works pretty good. And like I say, this little tool here really makes a difference. Once the plastic is all in, in theory, according to this plan, you are done. Um, however, reading other people's comments on this, and I watched a video on the, um, this guy here. Uh, Exodus 31 Crafts, 31crafts.com. That guy right there, he's in Texas, I guess. Um, he has these kits you can buy, and it's well worth it. Uh, it's like 50, 60 bucks, uh, something like that. But it, it gives you this little spacer, and these. You put on all of these cross pieces and it just hooks like this and then you can go around to the outside or you can have somebody standing inside which works good too to just hold them and then I use three quarter inch screws um, I got them from a hardware store I don't have the box but I just got the uh, eight by three quarter I got a box of eight by three quarter screws and then a box of washer neoprene washer screw or washers I got the quarter inch which is the size bigger than the 
screw than you would use for the eight threes, but the head fits in there still. And um, I got those, and I'll show you what you do with them. So you come around on the outside on all of these centers, and yeah, these central pieces like this, and you can see this little is setting on the inside. And then I took the three quarter inch or long screw, run it through this washer, just push it in there, poke it through the hole in here, and it's a pointed screw. It's not a self tapping, it's a pointed screw, and it will screw straight in to the aluminum. You press a little bit, use a screw gun, and it'll come down, and you don't want it too tight, just, just snug. And the reason that I went with the bigger size washer is it um, is thicker than the, the size that's supposed to fit here for this screw. Two reasons I wanted that was the screws easily slides through. You don't have to screw it through the rubber. And it's deeper and it's so the screw doesn't bottom out and make a dimple on the inside of this rail. Um, and I measured the screws, measured, and three quarter inch will put a little bit poking out. It won't come clear through, but it'll push the tin, the metal here a little bit, and I didn't want to do that. I took a box of 100 of those screws, plus then I wound up having to dig around 100 of the screws and 100 of the washers. And, and I went and dug through my um, bolt bin drawers and I, I had more screws that I was able to um, use so I needed another 20-25 of them and I had also some of the neoprene washers about so I used another 20 or 25 of those to do the whole, entire thing that's these and then up here on the roof at the edges of the roof there are a different block that comes with it and it sits in here and then the screw comes through just like it, but this gives you something to cover, to hide the point of the screw so you don't have it snagging your skin or just sticking out there looking ugly. So it's a real nice design he did. And I think his name might be Keith or Kevin or something. Um, so first, what I did was all of the, all of the centers all the way around and then you know the back as well and then moved up and did the roof it takes the same ones and to do the roof you pop open the lid the vent and slide it out of the way pick it up and slide it clear over so it'll drop down in between the the rails on the next side over here and lay flat and not bind up against the hinge and then you can you can do that screw right there and then if you're smart which I wasn't I went back through and did those blocks later which are these and these are the edges and um, I put smart person which I didn't do you would do both of those and then the center while you had this window open instead of like I did where I opened the window, slid everything around, did this side, moved it back, did that side, same over here, and then later, oh, got to do it all again. So if you do that at the same time, it'll save you a step. And then I, obviously we got to put these here on the top of this wall and the bottom of the roof. And then down at the, on the floor, line all the way around and those make a huge difference on that. This really is nice and solid. Um, he 3D prints these. It is well worth it. I also bought these little things. I don't know what they were, but they were on his website. And I can't quite figure out where they go. Uh, they go on the door somewhere, but there's so much. I thought that they was to replace this piece. And maybe it is, but it's, it's just too big from what I can see, so I'm not sure. But I'm sure it has a valid reason. Um, 
I forgot to say on this plastic when you put this piece up and then you add this top piece there are they're under this tape but there's J clips little tin clips that come up over to allow this to set down into and hold it to this one and we went ahead and put that aluminum tape over these because it was kind of floppy here and we taped that real good and here and here because it was kind of floppy and that made it real solid and then you can see right here there's screws poking through where I put some screws with washers over over the plastic to, to clamp them down on these ends so it would be solid um, these are just screws I had that's a self tapping this one is not you can see right here is the type of screw that you, you want to get those three quarter that's got that nice little point on it and it just just a little bit of pressure and it'll dig right into that aluminum and um, that pretty much finishes up your greenhouse um, and again I'm gonna have to at this point come back and readjust my door um, we're gonna go get some soil to some dirt to put around outside today it's supposed to snow tomorrow or actually tonight so get some dirt around here yeah. The uh, plate that goes on the uh, doorway I also screwed down with some self-tapping uh, big head screws. I wanted them relatively flush. The, I think they call them pan head. Um, but also, um, and as an additional tie down, I took some, <coughs> some round headed self-tapping screws and went through this aluminum plate into the, the part that you bury. <clears throat> I did that on each one of the bottoms of these window pane sections all the way around. That's in addition to those pull down clips that um, are already holding down the yeah, right here and these right here that hook onto that flat frame this is a 1x4 put on the back side of the doorway here that way, you get it. That way of stepping on this won't roll that over um, it's slid back and forth to get it to work down into the rocks. Rocks are behind it to hold against the, the base frame. And um, then I just put five screws in through the aluminum. Uh, this one's a little longer than what I used, but just little screws that are pointy will start through and bite. Uh, they stick just a tiny bit over. I think I may just take a file and knock that down. This actually took seven days to build. Um, about, well, they weren't full days, but it was a, a seven days of trying to figure out, okay, exactly where do we want it? And then how am I gonna get it level? And then digging and then assembly. Um, but it wasn't full days so um, and about four or five of those days was me and my wife both and the others were just because she was uh, doing other things all right well these the uh, final um, dirt were completed we got a yard of soil topsoil it's got a little bit of rock in it when they scooped it a little deep into their driveway. And we got a yard of soil and load. 
topsoil ish dirt uh, but uh, super happy with it and uh, I mean it's solid it's solid uh, especially when we get that soil up around the here on all sides the way rock but that's okay and um, went ahead and put a whole yard for the most part around and went kicked into expert landscape mode got the rake out kind of did some sculpting all the way around and um, then she turned on advanced landscape mode and got the hose and water packed it so sprayed down the sides uh, made some of the dirt off of it from when we put it together and there we have it so 